to the next, which is Mrs. Uh, Kyung Hing Van de Ven. Is it my? She's a youth representative of the Women's Federation for World Peace Europe and also Women's Federation for World Peace Netherlands. And uh, even Women's Federation for World Peace International Vienna UN team since 2021, right? So she will uh, report, she, she's a, as a reporter, she comes here as a reporter uh, of the whole conference and also uh, she will also speak about the resolution that uh, uh, Mrs. Caroline Henshin prepared together with uh, other people, yes. So I'm sure it will be. So I leave you. Good afternoon. Good morning, still, everyone. So good morning everyone, thank you to all my panelists today, uh, really, how to say, like really um, impactful reflections of reality and um, I think we all have a heavy heart hearing these individual stories, uh, but I think it's also very needed in this society today, especially if we go back to our daily lives to really um, capture these individual stories in our hearts so we feel every day moved to make it a bit better for everyone supporting each other. So uh, as a rapporteur of this conference, I diligently made a lot of notes of all the sessions, uh, but as um, time is a thing, I will not read everything <coughs> what I wrote. So, um, but first of all, I want to mention that we're very, very thankful as the Women's Federation for World Peace in Europe and Middle East, that we are able again after COVID to come together and to physically meet each other and to relate to each other, to connect with each other in heart, because the real dimension is still slightly different than the virtual, although we're grateful that we had the virtual. And um, I would like to express that I'm, I'm pretty sure that our founders, uh, Mr. Uh, Dr. Uh, Moon and Mother Moon, Moon, the mother of peace, is very proud and happy that we have the opportunity to be here together as women supporting each other, as women as mothers to really create a, a better world by supporting each other and networking together. So I just want to briefly recap the sessions we had this um, conference. So the first session was about the invaluable contribution of women to peace education. And we talked about identity and human dignity and peace leadership and peace culture. And we uh, proposed the concept of family hierarchy uh, as, as a counter proposal to matriarchy and patriarchy. And yeah, we learned a lot of, we heard about a lot of different disturbing things in the world, in different fields of life. Also, for example, the recent sex education curriculum in the West. Um, but we also heard what women can bring to the table, what are the qualities of women, and um, how we can support each other. We also heard that we shouldn't be lazy and work hard and break free of the shackles of low ambition. I love that one too. I think that's an appeal to everyone on this planet. We also heard about how we can, how we are responsible to really take care of Mama Earth and how we as the owners of the Earth are responsible all together and that it's all connected. We cannot do this in isolation. The whole world and also our planet need each other. Also, we learned about the impact of accumulated trauma and how it has an impact for generations. So we can only imagine what kind of impact it has on regions that has been impacted for decades and almost centuries with war and conflict. Anyways, um, 
we're very proud that we can be here all together and that we can network and connect. And because of that, um, we want to, um, how to say, motivate each other and make each other accountable and uh, keep our enthusiasm together by um, drafting a resolution. We have this tradition in the Women's Federation in our conferences to, to draft a resolution. And I'm gonna read it to you. Um, there were several people who contributed during this conference to this resolution. And um, I just want to mention some people who uh, made a lot of effort just until this moment actually to draft a resolution. And then I'm gonna read it. So special thanks to Dr. Tina Lindhart, uh, this is Laetitia van Hale, Dr. Zoe Bennett, Merle Angelucci, Renate Amsbauer, and our UN Director, Marilyn Henschen. So, um, I'm going to read it now, and I would really like to ask you to listen actively. You can also see it on the screen. And after, we will make a voting. We will make a voting if you could agree that this is our kind of working work in progress and that we all want to um, underline the words in it and want to work more together to um, achieve these goals. So, read with me, please. So the 20th Women's Leadership Conference, um, Women's Federation Women for World Peace and Europe and Partners. 110 women from 28 nations representing governments, international institutions, and a number of civil society organizations met in the historical Mediterranean city of Larnaca, Cyprus, to strengthen their solidarity and call to action under the theme, Transforming Our World Through Advancing Peace, a Culture of Peace and Human Dignity. Inspired by the remarkable legacy of women peacemakers, 75 years of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, our dedication to the Culture of Peace program, the Sustainable Development Goals, the Security Council resolutions on women, peace, and security, and the desire of all humanity to live in peace and share prosperity, we call upon our leaders and ourselves to settle for no less than, we can fit it in, Drawing upon 20 annual Women's Federation for World Peace Europe and Middle East Women's Leadership Conferences and 25 annual Women's Federation for World Peace International Women's Conferences on Peace in the Middle East, East, which have examined every angle of women's role in peace and human development, we can only pledge once again to stand by our convictions for which we are building momentum, drawing in like-minded women, organizations, networks, and agencies. From here. Okay. We cannot accept that frequent outbreaks of war and violent hostilities between communities, the persistence of cruel forms of injustice in our region and around the world are inevitable. We are convinced that the behavior that causes and feeds it starts early in childhood. Deconstructing such behavior must, therefore, begin in the family and in early childhood which is our responsibility. There is no peace without women. As such, we, women leaders, pledge again our commitment to take the lead in this task as we see all perpetrators and survivors of war and abuse as our own sisters, brothers and children, and to commit all our human resources to find effective ways to promote rules peaceful coexistence and a world of lasting peace. History is calling for reconciliation, compassion, love, service, and sacrifice. Yes, there's a little bit more. If you scroll down, please. Yes, if you, if you would scroll down. So we have uh, some points that we want to affirm. And those are, we believe that women have a unique capacity for peace because being guardians and givers of life, we are committed to reconciliation as the only way out. For that reason, 
alone, we must be given a much larger role in peace processes than is the case at present. As historic cycles of victimization and perpetuation of violence cannot be broken on the same level as they were created, a woman's apathetic perspective must be actu actively sought. The effectiveness of peace negotiations depends on the participation of recognized women leaders. Therefore, only peace negotiations in which recognized women leaders partake should be legitimate. I like that one. <laughs> Um, creative, non-violent, and non-military military responses to conflict and friction should become the norm through women's mentoring and networking. Violence is to be stopped or better prevented through early warning for which women's local knowledge is best placed. Though impunity must end for violence to stop, women would like to affirm the collective responsibility of positive peace building, creating safe spaces and platforms. Women should enhance awareness in their families and communities, in particular of the boys and men, of how the intergenerational consequences and lasting trauma of conflict and war threaten the mental health and capacity to live in peace for, of future communities. Women's equal representation in all areas of life should be promoted more vigorously, not as a token, but as a strategic best choice. Their strong advocacy for priori prioritization of resources for the basic human rights to education and healthcare for all is urgent, urgently needed. Peacekeeping should be doubled by peacemaking use, using women's capacity for reconciliation and social remodeling, starting with the creation of a toolkit for non-violent mentored communication to be practiced at home, as well so the children learn early. We should seize this sadly unique moment of grave existential concern to build momentum for peacemaking as here presented. We must raise awareness of the realities of injustice, war, and all kinds of violence by shielding children from it and giving survivors a voice so as to find opportunities and peaceful long-term <coughs> solutions. We need to empower one another, encouraging leadership and responsibility. We call for strengthening and re-establishing the family as a core institution where non-verbal skills and human values are imparted, imparted and learned. So that was the resolution that we could draft. Oh, sorry, it's not quite finished. Almost, this is the last page, right? Yes, yeah, bear with me. Uh, we recognize the need that obligatory sexual education, according to WHO standards, be revised by an expanded team of experts who also represent traditional human values which consider that long-term relationships within a family is the foundation of love. Women have a crucial role to play in environmental peace building and an integral part of a truly peaceful world. We women shall transmit love for nature to our families and communities and take the lead in sustainable personal and household consumption. Transmit to our families the love of nature enlightened by true knowledge. Gathering in the Middle East, where the situation is great, we are nevertheless convinced that we can turn things around by working passionately and in solidarity. This declaration and its resolutions are our plan, which we shall implement to the best of our abilities. So again, thank you so much for everyone who tirelessly worked on this document and for all of your inputs, because I hope you can recognize all of your inputs put in there. We really tried our best too. So um, yes, we would like to see if we can all agree on, this, on these points. There are quite some points. And I also would like to mention that um, we, could be fine-tuned and we would like to ask you to trust us also in the wording. It's more like we want to see if we can all confirm that we uh, want to make our best efforts to uh, work uh, from this document and also spread it in our networks so it's a working document and we can go on um, and be in platform together. So um, I would like to ask uh, who is in favor of this um, um, resolution. 
Yes, so um, I never did a vote before, but I guess who, whoever is for the uh, resolution, please raise your hands. <coughs> So I can see at least the majority in the room. Karen, would you like to add something? Okay. Okay. So could anyone uh, also raise their hands who uh, are against or this or want to not vote? So if anyone do not want to vote or is against some parts of the resolution, please raise your hands. Abstained. I don't see any hands now. So, okay, so then we can declare that unanimously in consensus accepted. So, thank you very much, ladies. And uh, let's give this up to each other and have a good Thank you very much. It's really a great work. I know that Caroline and some of you really work so hard on these uh, resolutions. So it's a working document which we can send, you know, to uh, higher, higher uh, responsible or leaders, or leaders. So but thank you very much again. Um, so just maybe, uh, I know that many other organizations, it would be interesting to know how many association organizations are here all together. How many partners are here? At the end, I think we will make, I will left here a paper, and then you can write your association or whatever. If you have many, you can write all of them. Whatever. It's interesting, just for us. Okay, we are coming now to, um, uh, to the Global Women Peace Ambassador Awards. So before we will get some uh, reflection as well, after the award, we will get some I think it's better to have the reflection first. Sorry, yes. <laughs> okay, we will have the reflection first. Ah, just Caroline, yes. Ah, just Caroline mentioned that the number of all the uh, association of women will be put into the resolutions, yeah? Which yeah. will be written there. Yes? That you agree. Okay, so now we come to the reflection. And as you know, we are mostly women here, but we have a few men. And I think it's interesting to understand or to know what is the impression of all the men. So I would like to invite uh, Mr. David Perry, who is uh, living in France. He came with his wife, and he accompanied his wife. So he's very nice. As a information, also we work in complementary with men, of course, we are not a feminist uh, movement organization, and we need uh, yeah, a complement. Hello. <laughs> okay, thank you for accepting me here with you this weekend. You might think that I came just to escape the cold, gray, rainy weather of Paris, and that's partly true. But I must say that I am a dues-paying member of the Women's Federation in France. Yeah. So I'm also a member of the Women's Federation. I try supporting Bridget in France as much as I can. Um, so I was very touched by this weekend. I'm very pleased that I could be here with you. The majority of the, the meetings that I attend, uh, well, you know, men work out of the mind. So most meetings are just intellect. Da, 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 da. Uh, but here we started the day with meditation. We started the day trying to get out of the mind and into the heart. That felt good. I really enjoyed that. Uh, and I was very touched by the desire of women to work together. We need this. I'm really sorry for what we men have done to the world. Uh, men are handicapped emotionally. No, it's true. Men tend to avoid even trying to express emotions. So men will talk about peace. Political leaders, they love to talk about peace. But as soon as there's a problem, they turn to violence. The only way to resolve is violence. Uh, in 2020, when COVID started, I saw the perfect example. Uh, Queen Elizabeth spoke to the people of Great Britain. She spoke as a grandmother offering hope and encouragement. 
we're facing a difficult situation. But if we remain united as the British people did in World War II, we'll get through this. I thought, wow, that's good. That's really good. A few days later, the French president, Emmanuel Macron, he spoke to the French people and he said, this is a war. We're going to fight COVID. We're going to defeat it. Oh, we can do better than this. So this is the reality. Also, we talked about the environment. Men have put into place an economic system based on extreme competition and it encourages greed and uh, selfishness. And that's why we have mistreated the world. So we really need women leaders who are going to be able to say, we don't have to act the way we're acting now. So I really encourage you to work together and support each other. This is vital. But I will say at the same time, I'm, I'm president of an association, and I learned quickly that when I wanted to organize something, I identify, there's two types of people in the world. There's the people that want to contribute positively, and there's the people that are going to see everything in a negative way. As soon as you propose something, they'll always tell you why it's wrong. So you can work with men, but identify the good men who are capable of being positive. If you know that you have to be negative, just support them and find good men and work with them. Ideally, men and women should be working together in a positive way. But make your network, so we can identify the good men and work with them. And together, we can do something with this world. Thank you.